Welcome to Managing MDS. My name is Moreno Fostuccia and I am a hematologist from the University of Torino in Italy. I had the pleasure to work with the colleagues of Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center of Seattle in the MDS MPN team during the last 10 months. We are frequently asked, what is the best prognostic classification of patients with chronic myelomonocytic leukemia? CMML is a clonal hematopoietic disorder with features of myelodysplastic and myeloproliferative disorders. It is characterized by myelodysplasia and peripheral monocytosis and the tendency to progress to acute myeloid leukemia. The disease was initially included in the French American British classification of myelodysplastic syndrome public, published 20 years ago. The FAB group distinguished two subtypes of CMML. One, a MDS type with peripheral white blood cells below 13,000 per cubic milliliter. Two, a MPN type with peripheral white blood cells greater than 13,000. The CMML was then included in a new category of MDS MPN overlap syndromes by the WHO in 2008. The diagnostic criteria are peripheral monocytosis, absolute count greater than 1,000 per cubic milliliter, persistent for more than three months, absence of bcr adelson fusion gene and absence of the PDGFR alpha or beta gene rearrangements, less than 20% blast and promonocyte in the peripheral blood or marrow aspirate, and the presence of dysplastic feature on at least one myeloid lineage or a detected cytogenetic abnormality. The WHO classification divided the disease in CMML1, less than 5% of blast and promonocyte in the peripheral blood, or less than 10% in the marrow, or CMML2, greater than 5% of blast and promonocyte in the peripheral blood, and greater than 10% in the marrow. Different prognostic models have been developed in the past years. I will briefly describe them. First, the MDS IPSS score. However, this score was not developed directly on CMML patients. The MD Anderson prognostic scoring system published in 2002, they take into account the hemoglobin level, the bone marrow blast, the presence of circulating immature cells, and the white blood cell count. Then the global prognostic scoring system for MDS and CMML proposed by Dr. Cantarjan in 2008. This scoring system take into account multiple parameters, including cytogenetics. And then the CMML specific prognostic scoring system that I will describe later. Then there are recently published scores that are taking into account even specific mutations, as well as ASXL1 mutations. However, the molecular markers are not yet widely avail available in clinical practice. What is the best prognostic model? It is at the moment impossible to know. I will describe the one that we are using now in our clinical practice. It has been published in 2013 in blood by Dr. Such and colleagues. It is derived by a retrospective analysis on 558 patients, then validated in another core of 274 patients. That is the main reason why we are using it. The authors identify the following independent prognostic markers. The WHO subtype, one point for CMML2, the FIB subtype, one point for white blood cells greater than 13,000. The cytogenetics, one or two points based on a specific CMML cytogenetic classification. And then the red blood cell transfusion dependency, one point for that. So combining this data, the authors identified four risk groups with a life expectancy of 72 months for the low risk group and only five months for the high risk group. The probability of evolution to AML at five years was 13% in the low risk group to more than 70% in the high risk group. I think that this prognostic index can help us in the discussion with CMML patients. It is likely that new prognostic markers, as well as specific mutation or post-treatment parameters will be incorporated in future prognostic models that should be validated in independent cohort of patients. 
At this time, allogeny transplantation is the only potential cure for the disease. For this reason, in my opinion, all patients with CMML should be considered for clinical trials. Thank you for viewing this activity. For additional resources, please view the other educational activities on managingmds.com. Thank you.